Longtime viewers of this channel might know my history with the fan game Sonic Roboblast 2, or SRB2. At first, I thought the game was neat, and then I started to dislike it during the Let's Play that I did with Garrelous64 and Dave Ace. Then I grew to resent the game with what I jokingly referred to as the Disaster Stream. Since then, I have sat down and given the game the full playthrough I needed from it. With that said, here's what I took away from it. While the game dates back to 1998, this video is going to cover version 2.2.8. It is the most recent version of Sonic Roboblast 2. I could go deeper into the game's history, but that's more fitting of a proper review or retrospective. These are just my thoughts on the game, though if I do sound like I'm reviewing it, sorry. It's just how I think about games. But with this format, I'll be allowed to say everything that I need to say about it. On top of that, I will be using 3D models because the 2D sprites start to look ugly in some sections. With that said, let's talk about Sonic Roboblast 2. For this playthrough, I chose to play as Sonic. Previous attempts had me playing as Knuckles, so I think it's about time I play as the character that the whole series is named after. SRB2 has the player going through many zones with two acts and a boss fight, for the most part. With Sonic, you can run around, jump, and spin to get to the goal. The spin dashing works just like how it does in Sonic CD, where the player must charge the spin, but it doesn't take too long to get to a decent speed. The new attack in Sonic's arsenal is this mid-air dash that fans have called the Thok. I don't get it. What I do get is that it's more than just a way to go into an enemy. It can be used as a platforming tool since you can guarantee jumps that you aren't very confident with, assuming you aren't on narrow platforms. It can even allow you to go back and rethink the move you were going to make. The Thok is only an air dash, not a real homing attack. If you want a real homing attack, you'll need to turn to the shields, the yellow shield to be specific. The game has a few shields that are carried from the official games, these being the yellow, electric, and bubble shields, and their uses are obvious to longtime fans. Homing attack, attract rings, and bounce, as well as stay underwater without the fear of drowning. Aside from those, this game brings in a couple shields that I haven't really seen anywhere else. The simplest being the double shield, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then, there's the flaming bubble shield, which, aside from making you invulnerable to any fire damage, will allow you to breathe underwater. Or in space and stop your forward momentum in case you overshoot a jump. Next is the Air or Gust Shield. By the way, I actually don't know the real names of them, I'm just going off of what I see. It allows you to execute a second jump to extend or correct a jump much better than the Thok is able to. And at last is the Radioactive Shield. It is an enemy obliterating screen nuke. It's a one-time use, but it's so satisfying to use. Let's get back to that gameplay. How does Sonic feel as he moves? Butter smooth. There's something to his faster momentum that exposes the game's origins. Doom. It's more obvious when you have Sonic strafing. Uh, unfortunately my controller scheme doesn't show it very well. Sonic and the other characters can easily use the levels to launch off intentional ramps or any slight incline. The benefit should be obvious to anyone, as you basically fly over large obstacles in sections, making it a thrilling experience. Declines that are steep enough can allow you to build up a lot of speed in a short distance. With all of that speed, how about the control of it? As I mentioned before, reaching top speed just from running reveals its origins, but also brings on a recurring issue that I have with the game. Sonic's traction. See, Sonic doesn't come to a complete stop or even a slower stop like he does in the classic games. The levels where I've noticed this are usually ones that have me slipping off of small platforms that lead to a death. This is made even worse when you try to fix a jump with the Thok, this isn't so I may brush off the quality of this game for this one issue, that'd be incredibly petty. It's just a heads up for newcomers to let them know what they might need to put up with. Some of these did lead me into game overs, which is something I really should mention. Dear new player, you will end up with at least one or two game overs. Thankfully, the devs have thought of a solution that I am kind of on the fence about. After every game over, you'll be given an extra five lives than what you previously started with. This is to give the player a few more attempts to get through a trouble spot. I like the intention behind it, but it makes the lives even more pointless. Lives will always be a constant with the series, unless you're Sonic Forces. A system that adds a few more lives does take away from the importance of the life counter. Limited lives tell the player, hey, you need to adapt to the hazards of this level, or figure out what you're doing wrong to make fewer and fewer errors. Increasing the count makes it hard to see the point in keeping limited lives in the first place. Then again, the save system does the same thing, since the only consequence of a game over is starting the level over. You can just restart and eventually beat a level. That's all I can say about it. You'll eventually beat the level. I'm sure there is a good compromise, but I can't really figure it out. I guess it's just picking the lesser of the two evils and just going with it. And now that I have that out of the way, 
let's talk about the actual levels. SRB2 has the player going through the grasslands of Greenflower, the factory known as Techno Hill, the aquatic ruins of Deep Sea Zone. I swear that was not a Sonic 2 reference, but hey, you know what? We'll leave it in there. The frame rate killing castle Eggman Zone. The I swear it's inspired by the Wily e. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoon Arid Canyon Zone. The mistake. And the of course it ends in space Egg Rock Zone. What's really impressive is that the zones manage to blend speed and platforming in a way that I haven't really seen in any other fan game and at the same time, keep the player interested. This isn't meant to be a knock on some sort of more wide open levels of fan games, but there is something to take away from SRB2. When there's an opportunity to break the level of Sonic, there's only so much you can actually break before you have to come down and play the level. Yes, the levels are massive, but the play area is limited. On top of that, Sonic's size in relation to the level isn't so small that it feels like it takes forever to get from one point to another, and it's not incredibly cramped. And finally, the enemy placement, for the most part, seems just about right. It doesn't overwhelm the player by cramming them all in one spot, nor does it bore the player by scattering them so far from each other that, again, you're just running around hoping for something to do. There weren't too many times where the design of a level got in the way of forward progression, and the same goes for enemy placement. Except this one. This is just garbage. Even some of the level gimmicks are pretty neat too. Techno Hill's purple goop, Castle Eggman's launchers, Arid Canyon's minecarts that remind me of the Moleville minecart section in Super Mario RPG, and Deep Sea being a fun water zone. Look, I had nothing on this one, okay? As for the boss fights, yeah, they're okay. The first few are pretty easy, but they do require a bit more planning by the time you get to Castle Eggman zone. And as for Metal Sonic, I will never like this boss. The final boss, on the other hand, is actually pretty fair. Sure, you can get launched and sometimes it'll send you right into a kill plane because you get knocked off the platform you're battling on, but there's plenty of cover to use to prevent that from happening. I honestly think it's pretty cool. And the evil Eggman laugh that you hear, which I swear sounds like it's from the OVA, which I'm pretty sure it is, is a nice touch to it as well. Since I can't really talk about the graphics and do them justice, I hope the gameplay that you're seeing actually speaks for itself. It looks really good in 3D. If you can play with this mode, go for it. 2D isn't that bad, but obviously, this is my preference. And the music! The music is phenomenal. They work really well for the zones that they are in, they create a great atmosphere, a lot of them are catchy, and if you don't think Castle Eggman 2 is the best, then you're wrong. Here's a few of my favorites. See, I told you this soundtrack has some absolute bangers. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say about SRB2. I know I didn't go in depth with the visuals and the music, or I could go a bit further with the gameplay, but that wasn't really the point of this video. It mostly had to do with things that I have observed. I could go into finer details with it, of course, but I think I would just be repeating myself over and over again if I kept doing that. And I don't want to sound like a broken record. Maybe I'll come back to SRB2 and do some special video for it, but for now, I think I'm fine with what I've said. Although, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh well, maybe somebody will point it out. I hope you enjoyed what I had to share about my- OH CRAP! The Emerald Stages. That's such an oversight. <laughs> so, they play like the levels of Knights into Dreams. If anything, they might control a little bit better than them. I'm not very good at Knights, so it's a little hard to judge that one. And for the most part, they're not too bad. Except for the last one. Which sucks. And I hate it. Thankfully, the reward gives you the super transformation, so I got to play a little bit of Supersonic, which is pretty neat. 
It's a lot of fun, and you also get the good ending, but honestly, I don't think that's the one reward people want. Who wouldn't want to go through the whole game of Supersonic? Okay, to you who raised your hand, I know you're lying. You want to play a Supersonic, trust me. It's a lot of fun. Okay, I think I got everything. So, I hope you enjoyed my reflection on my first solo playthrough of SRB2. Sure, it was brief, but I feel like the things I've noticed in the levels that I was able to summarize in this video was more than enough. I got everything that I really wanted to say about this game out there. If any of you have not played this yet and have not given this a full playthrough, first off, there's going to be a link in the description to give it a shot. But the second thing, and this is the important one, my recommendation is to not make your first playthrough an online one. Depending on that connection, your experience will be heavily affected by it, so I don't recommend it at all. My other recommendation is to use the 3D models if you can. You'll need some extra files to add in, so those are going to be linked in the description as well. Trust me, these are worth going for. And if you need a concrete answer, yes. I enjoy Sonic Robo Blast 2. At least this version of it. I would need to go to the other ones to see for myself if I enjoyed those, but 2.2.8 is my absolute favorite version of Sonic Robo Blast 2. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that I played it again. And again. And again. I think it was like Hydro oh, oh, Just to get ev just to get everyone. <laughs> That would, oh, oh god, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> and I left it at 4. In fact, this is all the footage that I've had of Sonic Robo Blast 2 from multiple playthroughs. I don't have the stream on there because that's going to take too much memory. Besides, I wanted to make this about my Sonic playthrough, and I hope I got my point across. One day, I might dedicate some time and I can take a look at some of the mods. There's a ton of them out there, including the recently released SRB2 Persona, which I really want to play. I just need to pick the right time to play it. I might do it on a stream one day, who knows. But with that said, if you liked the video, click like and sub if you're new, and don't forget to click that bell icon. That helps let you know when new videos go live, also new community tab posts. I want to give a shout out to the members of Nux Club Plus, their names are on screen right now, and if you want to join them and become a member with the perks included, click the join button, look at the perks, pick the one you want, and we can go from there. To all of my channel members, thank you all so much. Your extra support is greatly appreciated. You are all awesome. You can also find me on my Twitch TV page. I stream up to three days a week, and the link to that, as well as my social media platforms, pages, whatever, those will be linked in the description as well. I hope you all have a wonderful and safe day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.